So hello, welcome to the video and welcome to Heathrow's Terminal 4. A bit quiet this evening. Now a couple of months ago I stayed at the Thistle Hotel adjacent to Terminal 5 accessible via Heathrow's driverless automated pods and that video did quite well although quite a few of you said I really should have stayed at the Premier Inn by Terminal 4 because it was much better. Now I take your feedback on board so the next time an opportunity arose to stay at Heathrow I thought I'd take your advice on board and stay at the Premier Inn at Heathrow's Terminal 4. So in this video I'll show you what it's like to stay at the Premier Inn at London's Heathrow Terminal 4. Now I've booked one of their Premier Super Duper rooms, a new design which should be hopefully better than a traditional Premier Inn room and because tomorrow I'm actually going home rather than flying anywhere so going through a terminal and using any of the lounges I've signed up for their breakfast. It's an all-you-can-eat affair, words that I usually quite like. So if you'd like to see what the experience is like and you'd like to see me attempt to eat my body weight in bacon, stick around. Hi, I'm Matt and this is Matt's Planet. I aim to entertain, educate and inspire with my travel adventures from planning to execution. I'll show you how you can travel in style for a lot less than you'd think. So subscribe so you can come with me. There are four hotels down this delightful connecting walkway to be found at the northeastern end of the terminal, including the Premier Inn. Their website describes this as a 10 minute walk. I'll speed this walk up, but I can report it took me exactly five minutes to walk around and it was cold, so I was getting a move on. If I looked a little tired in that intro, I'd been going for about 20 hours by this point, so needed my bed. It hadn't helped that when I'd arrived into T5, the Elizabeth line had been suspended, so I'd had to take a tube to Hatton Cross to get another one which doubled back to T4. Moving between Heathrow terminals is free on public transport, and it's usually quick and easy when everything is running, but T4 can be a little trickier to reach as it's sort of stuck up one end of the airport, and as we saw earlier, not a lot was happening there when I passed through at 10pm. Not the most attractive walkway you'll ever experience, but it was well lit and there was lots of CCTV, so it felt perfectly safe. You arrive at the Premier Inn one floor above the check-in area, which isn't immediately obvious, but this checkpoint is usually manned to help direct you. Ah, here he was. Hello. Hello. I'm just check -in. Down a floor to the typical Premier Inn reception area, which is largely self-service. I've never been able to complete a check-in using these machines and today was no exception as a kind lady had to go and print a room card for me. It took about five minutes for her to complete this for some reason. Up to the seventh floor which hosts the newly refurbished Premier Plus rooms. I always seem to get the furthest possible room from the lifts. But I got there eventually and it was room 728 for me that night. Room card in the power slot and the delightful illuminations were revealed. Proper lighting was also available. So the room tour. An ironing board, dressing table with hair dryer and some hanging space if you can be bothered to unpack anything. A good sized desk actually with a telephone and tea and coffee making facilities. A comfy chair rather than the chaise long thing you get in a regular Premier Inn room and a bed. I'll pause to show the USB port beside that bed. That artwork is also a feature of a plus room. Around to the bathroom which has a waterfall shower head and some Bayliss and Harding consumables which Premier Inn says are a luxury brand even if I've never heard of them. Also in the bathroom is one very tired YouTuber. Good night. Fast forward to the next morning and you do get to see what the weather is doing and whilst my room didn't allow for plane spotting I could see some of the other properties available adjacent to Terminal 4. And the room looks a little better in daylight too. Almost everything I mentioned earlier is an added feature of this class of room. The tea and coffee corner looked good although I don't drink coffee so can't give you a review. Another feature I didn't point out was the mini fridge preloaded with two bottles of complimentary water. It was a nice room, clearly a step up from the standard Premier Inn room, and I slept really well. These refurbishments are relatively recent, but my room had already taken a few flesh wounds since conversion. 
A Premier Plus room also includes access to Premier Inn's ultimate Wi-Fi, although that was still pretty pitiful, delivering perhaps 1 20th of the download speed I was getting from the phone network. Helpful though, if you're not roaming. Breakfast was served from 5.30 to 10.30 in the restaurant across from reception and cost me £13.99p. You don't appear to get a discount for buying this in advance as I had done. Offered buffet style and I thought the range available was quite good. Nothing offered was exactly luxurious but it was good honest fare. One test of a buffet is the size of the platter the hot food is served from. The smaller the platter, the more frequently the contents are refreshed, and Premier Inn scored pretty well here by having very small platters. 14 quid feels like quite a lot, and I wouldn't have bothered had I had a lounge to go to, but it was tasty and satisfying, and set me up nicely for the journey home. Other facilities included a bar slash pub, it's not going to win any design awards, but there were quite a few seats and TV screens, and I'd noticed it had been quite busy at 10pm the night before when I arrived. There's a Costa coffee shop too, which alongside caffeinated heart starters also offered some lighter breakfast options. And even lighter options are available from these vending machines. Snacks, drinks, and that third unit contained travel essentials. I paid £77 for my plus room, plus £14 for breakfast, making 91 quid in total. And it was a good experience. The plusification of the room takes Premier Inn up a notch in my estimation. It's not the Savoy, but for the price, it's probably the best option of the four Heathrow venues I've reviewed on the channel so far. So would I stay there again? If I'm travelling from Terminal 4, almost certainly. If I'm travelling from any other terminal, almost certainly not. Getting to or from the property from any other terminal is a right pain, involving a decent walk, a train, possibly two, then the not insignificant hike along the walkway of doom to the hotel. And in my view, the property isn't so much better than the other options to make that hassle worthwhile. The Thistle is very convenient for T5 on a pod, and properties on the Bath Road are a short bus ride away from Terminals 2 and 3. As you'll see in a second, if you have mobility issues, one of the other hotels in this complex does offer passage along these walkways in a golf buggy. So thanks for watching, give this video a like, and please consider subscribing if you're new. And leave me a comment, would you stay here? Have you stayed here? And if you'd like to support what I'm doing more directly, there is a Patreon account, link in the description below. So thanks again for watching, there's the golf buggy, and I'll see you in the next one. Goodbye.